You're listening to Inga Reads. In this part, we will begin with the rules of the list, and we will continue and read the Conventions of Combat. That is Roman numerals 2 and 3 of the Marshall's Handbook. Um, this recording is replacing a previous recording where it was harder to see the verbiage, so I was able to re-record this for your use and ease should you want both an auditory reading as well as the visuals up on screen. Now, if you have any questions regarding the rules, please talk to your local marshal and check with your local kingdom's policies and rules, as well as make sure you are looking at the most up-to-date handbook. You can listen to other recordings throughout this handbook on my YouTube channel. Um, please feel free to use as it will help you get onto the field or stay safer out there. So, Roman numeral 2, rules of the list. A. The rules of the list. The basic rules for SCA combat are contained in the rules of the list. These rules cover all combat within the SCA, including but not limited to tournaments, non-tourney martial field activities such as wars, combat archery, and society period fencing. The observance of honor and chivalry and the safety of the combatants are the overriding goals of these rules. The following is intended to bring together the appropriate rules for conducting SCA combat activities. The rules of the list are reprinted here from section Roman numeral 9b of the corpora of the SCA. 1. Each fighter recognizing the possibilities of physical injury to themselves in such combat shall assume unto themselves all risk and liability for harm suffered by means of such combat. No fighter shall engage in combat unless and until they have inspected the field of combat and satisfy themselves that it is suitable for combat. Other participants shall likewise re recognize the risks involved in their presence on or near the field of combat and shall assume unto themselves the liabilities thereof. 2. No person shall participate in official combat-related activities, including armored combat, period fencing, in combat archery, outside of formal training sessions, unless they have been properly authorized under society and kingdom procedures. 3. All combatants must be presented to, and be acceptable to, the sovereign, in or his or her representative. 4. All combatants shall adhere to the appropriate armor and weapon standards of the society and to any additional standards of the kingdom in which the event takes place. The sovereign may waive the additional kingdom standards. 5. The sovereign or the marshalate may bar any weapon or armor from use upon the field of combat. Should a warranted marshal bar any weapon or armor, an appeal may be made to the sovereign to allow the weapon or armor. 6. Combatants shall behave in a knightly and chivalrous manner and shall fight according to the appropriate society and kingdom conventions of combat. 7. No one may be required to participate in combat-related activities. Any combatant may, without dishonor or penalty, reject any challenge without specifying a reason. A fight in a tournament list is not to be considered a challenge and therefore may be declined and forfeit the bout. 8. Fighting with real weapon, whether fast or slow, is strictly forbidden at any society event. This rule does not consider approved weaponry which meets the society and kingdom standards for traditional society combat and or society period rapier combat used in the context of mutual sport to be real weaponry. 9. No projectile weapons shall be allowed within the list of a tournament, nor shall any weapons be thrown. The use of approved projectile weapons for melee, war, or combat archery shall conform to the appropriate society and kingdom conventions of combat. B. Applications of the rules of the list. 1. Application of Rule 1. Other participants include marshals and support personnel 
whose activities bring them close to fighting in a situation where boundaries are not clearly defined. Heralds, list pages, and similar officers who leave the field entirely before combat begins are exempt from this requirement, as are water bearers and chirurgeons who remain in fixed support points outside the tournament field or battle area. Water bearers and chirurgeons who take part in mobile support groups within the overall boundaries of a battle area must receive a basic orientation in field safety. 2. Application of Rule 2 The Crown and or Marshalet of each kingdom shall establish standards and procedures for the authorization of fighters to participate in combat. These procedures shall adhere to the combat authorization procedures in this handbook. At Kingdom Option, these procedures may involve either a general authorization to participate in armored combat or a set of separate authorization procedures for the use of or for combat against specific weapons or classes of weapons. The Crown and or Marshalet of each Kingdom shall establish standards and procedures for the authorization of combat archers and missile users to participate in combat. Kingdoms may establish such additional limitations on the participation of minors as may be deemed necessary. It is usual for authorizations from other kingdoms to be accepted, although exceptions may prove necessary in the case of specific individuals. The Crown may not simply grant an authorization unless the recipient has successfully completed the authorization process as delineated in society and kingdom law. 3. Application of Rule 4 Kingdoms may apply armor and weapon standards that are stricter than the society standards, should they be deemed necessary, but may not reduce or waive any society standard. 4. Application of Rule 5 if a fighter regards an opponent's weapon or armor as unduly dangerous to self or opponent, he or she can request that the marshal on the field reinspect the item. Either fighter has the option of appealing the decision of the reinspection marshal to the marshal in charge and ultimately to the sovereign. 5. Application of Rule 6 Engaging in any society combat activity with the deliberate intent to inflict bodily harm to an opponent is strictly forbidden. 6. Application of Rule 7 No one is required to engage in SCA combat should he, should he or she prefer not to do so. 7. Application of Rule 8 since fighting with real weapons is forbidden at any society event, threatening the use of such weapons is likewise expressly forbidden. At the discretion of the Sovereign and the MIC, recognized experts may be permitted to present choreographed demonstrations with real weapons under strictly controlled conditions. No one may wear any real weapon onto the field while participating in combat or present during combat. At the discretion of the Sovereign and the MIC, an exception may be made for marshals or other non-combatants to wear knives bonded with peace straps. Posing for still photographs with real weapons is permitted. 8. Application of Rule 9 The prohibition on thrown weapons refers to weapons thrown in combat or thrown in a hostile manner. It does not apply to tossing, defined as a gentle short-range method of transferring or removing a tournament weapon or item from the list field or area of combat. The use of bows and arrows, firearm slings, javelins, throwing axes, throwing knives, or any other projectile weapon is forbidden within tournament lists or in any other situation where spectators cannot be separated from the potential line of fire by more than the effective range of the weapon. And now we'll move to Roman numeral part 3, Conventions of Combat. A. General Information 1. All traditional SCA armored combat at SCA tourneys 
wars, and other events shall be conducted in accordance with the rules of the list of the SCA, Inc. These conventions of combats and such weapon and equipment standards and event rules as are established by the Marshal of the SCA, Inc. and individual Kingdom Marshals. 2. All kingdoms shall have as their minimum armor and weapon standards those criteria established by the society minimum armor and or weapon standards. Each kingdom may require additional, more extensive, and or stricter standards. 2a. All fighters prior to combat at each and every SCA sponsored event or fighting practice shall ensure that their armor and weapons are inspected by a warranted member of the Kingdom Marshalate. 2b. Even though a warranted member of the Kingdom Marshalate has inspected the armor and weapons used by a fighter, each fighter shall accept full responsibility for the condition of his or her own equipment. Each fighter has the obligation to his or herself, the marshals, and all opponents to see that his or her equipment meets all society and kingdom requirements. 2C. Combat archery ammunition. Each must be inspected individually before every use. 2CI. Tubular shafted ammunition may be inspected by the archer and used immediately again. 2CII. Fiberglass shafted ammunition must be taken off the field and reinspected under the supervision of a combat archery marshal before being used again. 3. When not otherwise directed by the Sovereign, the Sovereign's representative upon the field and in all matters dealing with the society combat is the Earl Marshal, and by delegation, warranted members of the Kingdom marshal it. B. Behavior on the field. 1. Striking an opponent with excessive force is forbidden. 2. All fighters shall obey the commands of the marshal on the field or shall be removed from the field and subject to disciplinary action. Disagreements with the marshals on the field shall be resolved through the established mechanisms outlined in the Procedures for Grievances and Sanctions of the Marshal Procedures of the SEA, Inc. B3. Each fighter shall maintain control over his or her temper at all times. B4. Upon hearing the call of hold, all fighting shall immediately stop. B5. A fighter shall not enter the lists or participate in any form of SEA combat activity while impaired by alcohol or drugs, including, but not limited to, drugs prescribed by a licensed health care provider, over-the-counter medications, and illegal controlled substances. B6. Any behavior that takes deliberate advantage of an opponent's chivalry or safety consciousness or that takes deliberate unfair advantage of an opponent is prohibited. B7. A fighter shall not deliberately strike a helpless opponent. B8. Any fighter who obtains an unfair advantage by repeatedly becoming helpless, in quotes, for example, by falling down or losing their weapon, may, after being duly warned by the marshals on the field, be forced to yield the fight at the next occurrence of such behavior. The onus of this is on the marshals, not on the opponent. However, the opponent may ask the marshals to let the fight continue. B9. Grappling, tripping, throwing, punching, kicking, and wrestling are prohibited. Contact between combatants' bodies, shields, and weapons is expected in core a core or melee situations, such as controlled contract, contact is allowed during these engagements. B10. Deliberately striking an opponent's head, limbs, or body with a shield, weapon haft, or any part of the body is forbidden. B11. Grasping an opponent's person, shield, weapon striking surface, or bow slash crossbow is prohibited. B12. Intentionally striking an opponent outside the legal target areas is forbidden. B13. Intentionally striking a combat archer's bow or crossbow is prohibited. B14. Intentionally blocking a strike or projectile with a bow or crossbow is prohibited. C. Target areas. 1. Torso. All the body above the points of the hips, excluding the head and arms, and including the groin, shoulder blades, 
in the area between the neck and shoulders. 2. Face. The area between the chin and the middle of the forehead and between the ear openings. 3. Head. The whole head and neck except the face as defined above. 4. Thighs. The thigh from 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters above the top of the knee to align even with the bottom of the hip socket. 5. Hips. Area between the bottom of the hip socket to the point of the hip or the iliac crest. 6. Shoulder. From the point of the shoulder down to a line even with the top of the underarm. 7. Arms. From the shoulder to one inch above the wrist. 8. Blows at land outside the legal target areas shall not be counted unless an illegal target area has been intentionally placed in the path of an impending blow. D. Combat Archery Conventions 1. Upon a hold being called, all archers must unload their weapons. Crossbows may remain cocked. Archers may knock an arrow on their bow or load their crossbow at make ready or equivalent and may fire when play on is called. 2. Archers may have a backup weapon on them, but may not draw it until their bow or crossbow has been safely disposed of, as in taken off the field, discarded in a low traffic area, handed to another combatant, etc. Upon drawing a backup weapon to enter combat, hands must be appropriately armored. 3. Archers may carry and use thrown weapons without need to discard their bow, crossbow, or change hand armor. 4. Archers need to be aware of what is beyond their target area to ensure that errant shots do not endanger anyone. 5. An archer's minimum range is dictated by ensuring the ammunition completely clears the bow or quad before contacting the opponent. 6. Ammunition dropped onto the ground is considered dead as if it had been fired and needs reinspection. 7. Live combatants may pick ammunition off the field for reinspection, as long as reinspection is allowed during the scenario, and reuse it during the same battle. Dead combatants may clear ammunition from the field for use in future battles if scenario rules allow. 8. Within scenario limits, Ammunition may be taken from caches stored on or off the field and from other combatants, dead or alive, with permission of the owner. Roman numeral 4. The use of weapons and shields. That is in our next section. So we are complete with the rules of the work and the conventions of combat. For other recorded readings of this handbook, please see my YouTube channel. Look for the playlist in the reads, the Marshall's Handbook, July 2020 edition. As the handbook evolves and changes over the following years, I will do my best to record and update these sections and replace them. Again, if you have any questions regarding the rules themselves, check with your kingdom, your local marshals, and your most up-to-date handbook. If you have any questions or concerns or comments or complaints regarding the recording, please contact me, Ingergard Kostin Razi. I hail in the Kingdom of Atlantia and I hope to see you safely on the field soon. Have a great day.